after studying this module you shall be able to know the role of clinical and forensic psychology learn about the role of social and development psychology identify the different psychological technique used in forensic science familiarize with the evolution of forensic psychology introduction psychology is the scientific study of human mind and its function especially those affecting behavior in a given context and help in understanding his behavior which is socially significant psychology in its applied field based on scientific principles the applied areas of the basic psychological principle thus range across all spheres of the current complex social fabric and hence the specialties like health psychology sports psychology clinical psychology organizational psychology school psychology to name a few a just which have emerged in the current module the effort has been made to give an overview of one such significant area of applied psychology in the legal framework namely forensic psychology which is all forms of professional conduct when acting with definable previous knowledge as a psychological expert on the explicit psychological issues in direct assistance to the courts parties to legal proceedings correctional and forensic mental health facilities and administrative judicial and legislative agencies definable in a judicial capacity simply or it can be simply stated it implies that whatever any individual with his unique set of thoughts feelings and behavior comes in contact with the legal system it be a science and profession of law engaged in questions and issues related to psychology and the legal system in this module effort has been made to learn about the overlapping of forensic psychology with certain other applied areas of psychology juvenile offenders cannot be dealt without laying with the school psychologist the forensic psychologist aim at keeping the system as black and white as possible yet compensating for the inherent shaded areas gray areas of human nature he does not he does that by employing scientific robust method to generate information in the form of report or a testimony to provide to the judges jurors attorneys hiring law enforcement agencies information with which they were they may not otherwise be familiar to assist them in decision making related to a law or a statute which are either ad administrative or civil or criminal the forensic psychology has been associated with clinical forensic psychology and legal forensic psychology now let me shed some light on role of clinical forensic psychology the application of clinical psychology implies the mental health issues that may arise in both criminal and civil context of the legal system in the criminal law the most common issue involve assessment of psychiatric and psychological status of an individual who occupies any relevant role in a trial this may define his competency to stand trial to take criminal responsibility competency of a witness risk assessment for discharge from hospital parole or probation juveniles amenability to treatment juvenile transfer or waiver or the possibility of violence toward oneself or others in civil law the clinical forensic psychologist may need to contribute toward quantifying the cognitive and psychological status 
such that the functional capacity may be viewed in areas like testamentary validity, need for guardianship, need for involuntary psychiatric hospitalization, compensation for psychological damage due to abuse of any nature, compensation suits related to workplace harassment, personal injury, eligibility for disability, eligibility for special education, fitness for duty, example police, army men or doctors and the like. Similarly, clinical psychological consultation may be needed for forensic assessment in family law matters such as child custody, visitation and termination of parental rights. Although clinical forensic practice is largely toward assessment, counseling, psychotherapeutic inputs toward treatment may also be sought. There is an overlap with correctional psychologists in this area while dealing with inmates, but clinical forensic psychologists have contributed significantly while working with divorced or divorcing families. What is the characteristic of forensic clinical treatment? It is applicability to specific psycholegal issues. For instance, forensic psychologists may provide treatment to defendant, educated, incompetent to stand trial with the aim of restoring these individuals to competency. In this case, the psychologist applies not only general clinical treatment principles but must focus the treatment on issues that are specific to the legal context. They may also provide valuable expertise to other practitioners, agencies and the legal agencies regarding assessment, parameters of risk of violence which includes the appropriate use of specialized tests and actuarial instruments. Heightened concerns over increasing school-based violent outbursts, workplace aggressive incidents and widespread sex offenses. The demand on clinical forensic psychologists for providing reliable and valid instruments which have applicable generalizability has markedly increased. Now let me tell you something about role of social psychology in forensic sciences. Social psychologists within this framework use social experiments to provide scientific conclusion on issues such as jury selection, credibility of witness and psychological influences on jury decision making. The aim is to identify and understand group dynamics along with individual variables that affect jury deliberations and decision making. Social psychologists also view the legal system itself as an institution whose processes can be subjected to psychological analysis studying, for example, the relative merits and demerits of the adversary system versus mediation and arbitration, social psychological paradigm. Theories and research methods are applied to legally significant issues which are social but provide a context to the individual seeking the interference of the legal framework. These may include the factors that have relevance to certain races and gender or other psychosocial variables like the perception of what constitutes sexual harassment without the consideration of which the decision making in the criminal justice system may be incomplete. Thus, a major chunk of forensic work here has to apply the social psychological principles like those of attitude formation and persuasion, group dynamics, social influence, social loafing and altruism, violence and deprivation, social perceptions and stereotypes to name just a few. Now talking of role of developmental psychology, 
developmental psychologist when contributing to legal psychology often conduct legally relevant consultations and provide empirical basis to legal issues related to children and adolescents who are affected by decisions of the law directly or indirect the range of issues at hand is wide for example they may include the accuracy and suggestibility of children's testimony or questions regarding the ability of adolescents to make legally relevant decisions and to understand their rights in letter and in spirit the minor may be at the receiving end as in case of divorce separation and custodial arrangements and the court must take into account the level of child adolescence cognitive moral emotional maturity while making the financial judgment its significance get marked as children are at their formative years wherein they are highly influenced by the environmental forces be it human or circumstantial in the same breath the impact of the legal decision is going to change these minors adult personality a major field of inquiry has focused circumstances wherein the testimony of child witness must be viewed credible this has been a particularly important area in light of some highly publicized cases of elaborate child abuse rings developmental psychologists have made major contributions also on the effects of age and types of questioning and on the subsequent accuracy and suggestibility this field has also brought out the impact of compelling children who were allegedly abused to testify directly at the trial of the abuser this body of research led to the submission of an amicus brief to the supreme court by the apa in case of maryland versus craig in 1990 when a child or an adolescent is a perpetrator the role of a developmental psychologist becomes imperative to understand whether the exhibited deviance had a purposive intent or was a misconstructed behavior in isolation due to the absence of appropriate cognitive maturity to assess its implications thus working on any legal framework in the absence of a developmental forensic psychologist would risk a minor to have victimization without the intention for it and the impact would be far reaching as it could color the affected person's predispositions as an adult now role of cognitive psychology in forensic sciences you see perception and memory are the building block of a legal proceeding a cognitive psychologist provides the scientific base for the psychological issues that may influence these by extrapolating the research findings on perception and memory substantial progress has been made in objectifying legal relevant issues like eyewitness identification accuracy of witness memory issues related to recovered memories and people's ability to detect lying or deception the general theory and research in cognitive processes like attention concentration perception memory span illusions errors in judgment among other areas have been applied for authenticating testimonies factors that affect memory includes stress cross racial identification and deterioration of memory all have implications for the criminal justice system for example wells et al in 1998 published a set of recommendations and guidelines for lineups during eyewitnesses identification incorporating theory about 
the impact of relative judgment with experimental studies on lineups and scientific logic, thereby removing confounding and influencing variables. But for the cognitive forensic expert, many a malingerian would go unnoticed or normal human perceptual errors would result in faulty verdicts. Forensic psychology is thus a field with a whole range of applicability. The psychologist involved may not necessarily have competence or expertise with all populations and in all areas of forensic practice. For example, psychologists who have been trained primarily to work with children, adolescents and families may then learn to apply their knowledge in child custody cases but may not necessarily have the requisite background to assess or test mental capacity in mentally ill adults unless the psychologist had strain in a correctional or forensic setting. For example, he or she may not be familiar with or compete to assess defendants who are psychopathic. Therefore, training in forensic psychology need to focus both on understanding the appropriate clinical population as well as gaining the specialized legal knowledge and skills in forensic methodology. Let us see role of psychology in forensic lab. Psychology has made its definitive way into the techniques used in the assessment of individuals in the forensic laboratory. Some standardized measuring psychological instruments have been developed specifically for forensic evaluations and have been successfully applied in various populations for profiling. For instance, the COMPASS system designed to assess key risk and needs factors in adult and youth correctional populations is highly psychologically loaded. It helps in determining four kind of risk general recidivism violent recidivism non-compliance and failure to appear for use at a variety of decision point in the criminal justice system similarly the irons was created by dr holly miller in 2006 as an offender assessment of static risk dynamic risk need and protective strength factors. It consists of four total indices, eight scales, 14 subscales and two validity scales. In the areas of violent and sexual criminal behavior, Rogers Criminal Responsibility Assessment Scale, also known as RCRAS, and the mental state at the time of the offense screening evaluation are two examples of psychological measures developed for insanity evaluation in terms of criminal responsibility and for ruling out defendants mental abnormality. Similarly, various core psychological measures have been made their way into forensics like multiphasic personality inventory discovered by Butcher et al. in 2001 and revised NEO known as Neo Personality Inventory discovered by Costa and McRae in 1992. Significant use has been made of instruments that are psychophysiologically based and the evaluations from the responses are done using core psychological constructs across clinical and cognitive domains. The following need a notable mention but must be viewed 
as the basic instruments as more and more sophisticated measures are being developed light detector originating from the polygraph light detection based on sophisticated measures of biofeedback and continuous recording of minor variations on complex computer programs provides a whole range of instruments the basic principle is to provide psychologically arousing cues intermittently while monitoring the changes using pulse temperature respiration skin conductivity or any other psychological measure in this process an individual trying to mislead by providing untrue information can be identified number 2 is brain fingerprinting brain fingerprinting is a forensic science technique that uses electroencephalography to determine whether specific information is stored in a subject's brain by measuring electrical behavior of the brain wave responses towards phrases or pictures that are presented on the computer screen a cognitive psychologist assists in interpreting the eeg variations in the interpretation of the relevant material number 3 will be narco analysis in this analysis the subject's imagination is neutralized by making him semi conscious in this state person cannot lie to any question experts inject the subject with intravenous hypotonic medications like sodium pentothal and sodium amital the dose is dependent on the person's sex age health and physical condition this process too cannot be conclusive without the active role of forensic psychologists and the last one would be criminal profiling it is profiling the offender based on clinical psychological analysis of the consistent behavioral and personality features after in depth accurate understanding of the psychosocial functioning a profile is created which assists in predicting the characteristics of unknown criminal subjects or offenders thus leading to apprehending them Now let us discuss about evolution of forensic psychology. Munzberg, a student of Wundt and a professor at Harvard University, is generally credited with founding the field of forensic psychology. His landmark book on the witness stand brought out the significance of a psychologist role within the legal framework. Partially based on his experiences As an expert witness he highlighted psychological issues involved in memories of witnesses crime detection untrue confessions hypnosis and crime prevention he is reported to have it astonishing that the work of justice is ever carried out in the courts without ever consulting the psychologist However, a satirical article published in the Illinois Law Review by Wigmore, a leading scholar on the law of evidence, highlighted the grandiosity in the claims made in psychology's relationship to the law, which brought a temporary stop to the initiative, even when some forensic representations were made. the qualification and training relevance of the psychologist was put to questioning in 1962 the dc circuit court of appeals held in jenkins versus united states that psychologist could provide expert opinions in court regarding mental illness at the time a defendant committed a crime in the opinion Judge David Bislon reviewed the training and qualification of psychologists 
writing for the majority he indicated that experts on mental disease could not be limited to physicians but rather such factors as training skills and knowledge should serve as the basis on which experts were qualified consequently psychologists were accepted by court as experts on a wide range of legal issues similarly in 1954 The US Supreme Court in Brown versus the Board of Education held that the school segregation was illegal in this case an appendix prepared by three psychologists Kent B Clark is their chain and Stuart Cook was included with the plaintiff brief social science research including the psychological effects of segregation on the self image of children was cited in 35 footnotes points raised in this appendix and in a subsequent response to the court was cited in the opinion representing the application of psychological research to appeals court decisions in 2000 a petition was submitted to the APA in support of recognition of forensic psychology as a specialty in professional psychology in august 2001 apa council of representatives formally approved forensic psychology as an area of specialization within the field of psychology in one of the earliest attempts to describe forensic psychology as a specialization and simultaneously identify training needs Poitras wrote an article appealing in the American Psychologists suggesting that specialized training be provided in four specific domains these included legal test and concepts assessment relevant literature courtroom orientation now de matto marquesi and cross and burl based on extensive survey extended the same into the total of six domain number 1 substantive psychology including core psychology number 2 research design and methodology and statics number 3 research experience number 4 legal knowledge number 5 integrative law psychology knowledge number 6 ethics and professional issues included both general and specific and the last one clinical forensic training the publication of the edited book who is the client was significant in laying out the contours of the field of forensic psychology and differentiating it from therapeutic practice in clinical psychology the field has now come of age and has acquired its rightful place the ethical guidelines are the specially guidelines for forensic psychologist and the ethical principle of psychologist and code of conduct contains a section devoted to forensic psychology as is evident from this discussion the practice of clinical forensic psychology spans a wide range of populations including young children adolescents families the elderly people having mental illness and criminal accordingly with regard to training a forensic specialist need to begin with a strong foundation of general clinical training and skill development to exhibit these skills and their forensic applications a foundation of clinical competence in understanding psychopathology assessment interviewing conceptualization and their applied hold is needed while training to become a forensic psychologist not only are these consideration imperative there is a need to move beyond the exclusive reliance on unguided clinical judgment as the basis for expert forensic opinion objectifying the clinical and forensic decision making have been identified as essential to this effect technological 
developments in computer assisted decision making for risk assessments and other forensic evaluations through appropriate use of forensic cognitive neuroscience tools and specific forensic assessment instruments and objective psychophysiological testing are the highlights of current research in the area efforts towards scientific understanding of self report clinical judgment heuristics and memory have taken central role in forensic evaluation content and expert decision making development for improved methods of detecting quantifying and correcting for bias and lack of objectifying in experts in an ongoing process the partnership of psychology with the legal system has come of age after giving different definitions given by different scientists the module concentrated on the perception and memory which are building blocks of a legal proceeding a cognitive psychologist provide the scientific base for the psychological issues that may influence these psychology has made a definitive way into the techniques used in the assessment of individuals in the forensic laboratory it is scientific study of the mind of humans and its functions particularly those disturbing behavior in a given context developmental psychologist when contributing to legal psychology often conduct legally relevant consultations and provide empirical basis to legal issues concerning children and adolescent who are affected by decisions of the law directly or indirectly